Okay. So on Tuesday we were talking about um, the volume of prisms. Remember the whole concept is it's the area of the base times the height of the prism. Any questions on that situation? All right, so today we're just going to talk about volume of cylinders. Which you could probably tell me what the formula is for volume of the cylinder because a cylinder is really just a special type of prism, right? It's a prism that has a circular base. So if we know that for any prism, the volume is capital B times H, where B is the area of the base, then how does that formula adapt when it comes to cylinders? What is the formula going to be? Anyone? Uh, no. What's the wait? What did you say? Pi r. Oh, pi pi r squared h. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So p. Yeah. I said it in German. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So in the, in the case of cylinders, the b capital B is pi r squared. So it's just going to be pi r squared times h. That's it. Pretty easy, right? It's the area of the base times the height. Okay? So if you have a cylinder, um, suppose you have a, like an above ground pool or something, above ground pool, and let's say it's uh, eight feet, the radius is eight feet, and the height is four feet. And you're trying to figure out the volume of the pool, how much water will fit in the pool. Super easy. It's just going to be pi r squared times h. Pi 8 squared times 4. So I could put this in simple statical form if I wanted to, just by multiplying 64 times 4. So you get 256 pi. Or if I'm trying to get a decimal answer, that's easy too. 56 times pi is 804.2 cubic feet of water. 804.2. Okay. So what if we had a um, composite solid? Like suppose I had a mailbox. We did a problem kind of like this on the extra credit review for surface area. But suppose we have like a mailbox shape. So it's basically a rectangular prism with a half of a cylinder on top. Something like that. And let's say we wanted to calculate its volume. Suppose this was 10 inches across and 15 inches long. And let's say this distance here is 12 inches. So definitely the volume would just be the volume of the box part, the rectangular box part, plus the volume of half a cylinder. Right? So a box is just length times width times height. So 
and this is going to be 10 times 15 times 12. And a cylinder, half a cylinder would be half of pi r squared h. Half of pi, what's r in this case? Five, five, right? Because the diameter is the same as the bottom of the box, so it's this is 10 as well. So it's five, five squared times, and then what would h be as it relates to the cylinder? Yeah, 15. That's it. You just evaluate this, all right? So let's just say we're just doing it all as a decimal. So you just, you can do it all at once. 10 times, oops. Uh, 10 times 15 times 12 plus 1 half five times pi r squared pi squared times 15. There's the whole thing all at once. So it would be 2389 to the nearest whole number, 2389 cubic inches. The very top, sure. Okay. Um, another type of composite solid is what if you have uh, something like a toilet paper roll or something like that, where you had a cylinder with like a hole in the middle, like that, a roll of toilet paper. And suppose this roll of toilet paper was um, six inches across, six inches high, and let's say the hole was two inches across. So how could you calculate the volume of paper in this roll? Would be the um, two times six, right? Isn't it down in the Well, two times six, that's not the formula for volume. Oh, at all. yeah. Because I was thinking it was a square. Yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, you find the volume for the whole cylinder that would subtract the volume of the whole. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to be the volume of the, the big cylinder, right? Like this size cylinder, minus the volume of the whole part of it. The air in the middle. That makes sense, right? So again, the diameter is given in both cases. So this one's going to be pi 3 squared times 6. And this one's going to be pi 1 squared times 6, right? Because the radius of the, the whole roll of paper is 3, and the radius of the whole, of you so H O L E would be uh, one, right? So this is nine times six, which is 54 pi. And this is one times six, six pi. So the answer would be 48 pi. And that's the exact answer in terms of pi, cubic inches. Any questions on that? Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about today is something that's important, it's called Cavallari's principle. This principle has the L E or AL? I don't know. We get L E, right? Yeah. Uh, so Cavallari's principle states the following. It says, if 
any two prisms or cylinders. have the same base and congruent cross-sections at any level then their volume Now this might seem obvious because you might be thinking, well, if they have the same base, cross sections are all congruent, then they're really just the same prism, the same cylinder. But not necessarily. One of them could be a right prism or a right cylinder, and the other one might be non-right. Okay, like think of a cylinder being like a roll of coins. If I have like a stack of coins. Okay, so suppose this is just a stack of coins stacked up like this, right? And suppose that you have another stack of coins, but they're not stacked directly on top of one another. Instead, each one is slightly off from the next one, right? So think of this other stack as being like a stack of coins that kind of looks like this. Where the coins aren't quite stacked up straight up and down, but there's the same number of coins in the stack. Can you picture that? So you have two stacks of coins. You have 10 quarters, and then you have 10 quarters, but the second stack of 10 quarters, the, the it's slightly off vertical. So it kind of looks like this. Doesn't it make sense that the volumes would be the same? There's the same number of metal in this stack of coins as there is in this stack of coins, certainly, right? So that's what this is saying. It's saying that if you have two stacks of coins like this, as long as there's the same, the same number of coins in each stack, the volumes are the same. Of course, that's true, right? But it works for um, prisms as well. Like, so for example, suppose you have a um, one of those little white erasers that are shaped like this, straight up and down like a little box. And then you have one of those pink erasers that are more like perpendicular sided, kind of like this. It's saying that it doesn't quite look like this. It doesn't quite look like the same length. So let me check this out. That's a little bit better. Um, so suppose that they have the same length, width, and perpendicular height, then they have the same volume. Which makes sense, because it's length times width times height, right? It's the area of the base times the perpendicular height. So that's Cavallari's principle. It just states that if you have a right prism or cylinder or a non-right prism or cylinder, as long as they have the same dimensions in terms of altitude and then the area of the base, then they have the same volume. Okay. That's an important thing to remember. Any questions on that? So the homework is uh, two parts. There's a Delta Math part of it, and then there's also a, uh, an IXL part of it. The Delta Math part of it is just called volume of cylinders, and the IXL part of it is called volume of prisms and cylinders. Okay, it has both things in it. Thank you.